the Charles Daly field grade 1911. Let's check it out. The 1911 has been an American favorite for over 110 years. Uh, used by the U.S. military from 1911 till 1985 and then beyond. And its popularity is bigger now than it's ever been. A number of different companies that make them all the way up to thousands of dollars and then we can get down to a very reasonably priced 1911. Some of those are hit or miss. Today we're going to take a look at the Charles Daly field grade 1911. Now these were originally made by Arms Corps in the Philippines and now these are being made by Brixia in Italy under the Charles Daly name. Brixia is very well known for making fine shotguns but they took the original plans of the 1911 and they came out with their Imperial model, their Superior model and now the field grade. We're going to take a good look at this pistol and for the money I think this gun is way above its pay grade. Now we recently featured this pistol in the Get Zone Father's Day gift guide and we really appreciate Get Zone for putting us together with Charles Daly to bring you this review. All right, the Charles Daly 1911. It's the field grade model. They do have a couple of other models as well. Guys, to be honest with you, when I first heard that they were sending a Charles Daly 1911, I was like, okay, basic entry 1911. But I'm going to tell you, the finish on this gun and the fit of the parts uh, is really well done. And it has a manganese finish on it, which is a parkerized finish but it's really fine. One of the things about typical parkerized finishes is that you put your finger on it like that and it has a big fingerprint and it just always looks that way to me. This to me looks more like the traditional military grade 1911s, uh, especially the US military. It just has a really smooth, very crisp finish to it. Uh, and that was just the first thing that struck me with this firearm. And of course, finish is just part of it, but Charles Daly, 1911 here on the slide, and it's kind of minimal in a sense, even though it does have different areas where it is engraved. Now, let's go ahead and check to make sure the gun's unloaded. We're going to drop our magazine. It's an eight-round magazine. It's highly blued. Pretty nice magazine. Uh, and this is probably the only thing that's a departure from the classic 1911 look, uh, but very well done. Check the gun, make sure it's unloaded, and the chamber's empty. Now, like I said before, you know, they were importing these through Arms Corps. At one point, uh, they were just plain basic 1911s. Uh, Arms Corps makes really good 1911s, by the way. I'm a big fan. Uh, but I really like the finish that they're putting on this a lot better. Made in Italy by Brixia. And this is the key, I think, to this firearm. This has a lot of really nice features. The fit and finish. A lot of the tolerances to me are superior in a lot of ways and so for a budget priced 1911 or an entry level 1911 uh, I think this is going to be one of the better ones uh, it has the nice hardwood grips and with the diamond pattern and then we have just the CD for the Charles Daly right here uh, but fairly minimal it doesn't take a lot away from it these are made from a solid piece of billet steel uh, forged and it's both the slide and the frame. These are all steel frame and you know they have some heft to them which I like especially with these old government 1911s. Really fine serrations, uh, the controls definitely 1911 with your safety, spur hammer, 
uh, with your beaver tail that's more of a tang than a lot of these high ride beaver tails and of course this is the way the military used them uh, we have an arched mainspring housing and then of course you have your slide stop your mag release the slide to frame fit is really tight very minimal movement here with the barrel and the barrel bushing same thing I mean it is lock solid and I think that the tolerances on all these parts there's everything seems to fit really well hammer sounds really good going back good solid lock up sometimes when these get to be too tight uh, it can affect reliability and I think that's one of the things they've got a great balance between really nice fit and yet good reliability now the barrel is five inches in length uh, it has those military grade type sights uh, they are driftable and you can put other sights on here if you want you may have to have a dovetail put in to put some of the nicer sights I mean to me I like the way this is designed out if you want to have the adjustable sights the high ride beaver tail and you know you can put extra grips on here you can really trick this out I mean it takes 1911 parts but I like it in the traditional look uh, there's just something about it that's very nostalgic and it's just something I love so for me, if I wanted all those features, I would just buy one of their higher tier models. These do have Italian proof marks on them, government proof marks, and these are tested at the factory. Each one, they're pressure tested, which is a big deal. And it's something that a lot of your handguns are not getting. But one of the things about the 1911 is just the feel. I mean, it's a thin handgun and it just naturally points. It's very balanced. And it's one of the reasons why it was so popular among the troops. Now, 1911s are single-action semi-automatic pistols, and that means that when you pull the trigger, uh, it does not actuate the hammer. It releases the sear with the hammer already cocked. And so you load your magazine, you enter a fresh round, and now you're ready to fire, have your safety. Of course, activates the safety, keeps the hammer from falling. Uh, the grip safety also has to be depressed before the hammer will fall. So that blocks it. And this is something from the U.S. military uh, specifications, but we've retained it. And so then when you release your safety, you pull the trigger, it fires, and then the slide comes back and loads another round. And typically people that carry one of these in the chamber, they'll cock the hammer, they'll pop up the safety, and this is cocked and locked. Now this is a Series 70 design, and so that means that it's not really drop safe, but with this safety on and with the grip safety, it's going to keep it safe. But Colt ended up changing it to the 80 series, which has a firing pin block. And the trigger pull is just not as crisp as on the 70 series 1911s. But all 1911s have a much better trigger than your striker fire pistols. And so we're going to take a look at the trigger action. Have a little bit of take up right here. And then a really crisp, clean break. Reset real fast. I mean, very smooth. Now we got our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. I'm going to have to depress the grip safety. Six pounds, 6.8 ounces. Six pounds, 9.5 ounces. So about six and a half pounds. But guys, there is no grit. There's no real resistance other than that little bit of take up. It's a really smooth shooting trigger. And the weight, two pounds, 6.6 .6 ounces. It is a full steel firearm, but you're glad when you're shooting that 45 ACP. We appreciate Fiocchi for sponsoring the ammo, all made right here in the USA. We're shooting some 230 grain ball and uh, putting it through its paces. Now the Charles Daly's in 1911, it shoots like a 1911, has the same feel of your government model. Shot very well, we had no malfunctions, uh, shooting Fiocchi 230 grain ball. The one thing about a 1911 is it's more of a push than a punch. Nine millimeter gives you a little punch, quick punch. 45 just has that slow, large caliber, and it's there's something just satisfying about it. Of course, the 1911 handles very well. Uh, all the controls are very intuitive especially for me because I cut my teeth on them, but honestly, it's a very pointable handgun. It's thin, 
it just seems to go in the direction you're pointing it. Even with these just field grade sights. I mean, these are GI sights, so you're not gonna really get a lot of accuracy out of them at distance, but they're very suitable. The grip safety was comfortable. Uh, really, I like to have a high ride beaver tail just because it gets my hand up on the pistol. Gives you a little more surface on the web of your hand, but still comfortable to shoot. I like the styling, the original GI model. I mean, it just is very nostalgic and it's a lot of fun to take to the range. We used the magazine included. We also had a Metgar mag and a Colt mag and interchanged them with no problems. Now I like the texturing on the grips. It gives you just a little bit more gripping surface. Even though you pretty much hold your firearm from the front strap and the back strap, having your fingers and the palm of your hand with those little serrations gives you just a little more confidence, especially shooting that big 230 grain freight train coming out the front. And just like a freight train, it's slow, but buddy, it's sure. Now we're going to disassemble the firearm. We have the magazine removed. We're going to make sure the gun is unloaded, and it is. We're going to leave the hammer in the rear position. Uh, these are a lot different than your current striker fire pistol takedowns, uh, but still not that difficult. Uh, we're going to take our recoil spring plug. We're going to push it down and turn our barrel bushing. And you want to turn it just like this to the 9 o'clock position and then release that buffer tube. It is under spring tension. Then we can take and turn our barrel bushing, and then there's a key that allows this to come right off. This is a solid barrel bushing. It's not the leaf design where they're cut out. And then we're going to go ahead and remove our plug. And then we're going to come back and bring our slide over to this first notch. And this will allow us to push from the other side and to release our takedown tool or our slide stop and then just bring the slide on out and this has your standard recoil spring guide plug or guide rod and we have our recoil spring the barrel does come out through the front just want to make sure that this little link is pushed in the down position I mean it's just 1911 insides very well done I mean the finish is well done no tooling marks here in the slide, you can see the wear from firing the handgun, but it's well finished on the inside as well. Here with the barrel made it up to the frame, nice fit. And guys, that is your field strip. Uh, it is a little bit different than your standard striker fire pistols, but it's not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and take my guide rod, recoil spring guide rod, and put it onto the spring. And then we take our barrel, making sure that this link is in the forward position, and again, bring it in the front of the slide. And once we get it there, we want to raise that link up just a little bit, and we're going to put in our recoil spring and guide rod. Now, this link is important because this is where your takedown or slide stop goes through. And so as we bring it over, now once I see that the hole's open with the guide rod, I go ahead and put my slide stop in there to hold it, and then I bring that notch right in front of this spring. Now, one thing you don't want to do is to scratch your frame with your slide stop. So you get it really close in and then just pop it in like that. And then you can let it go forward. Next, we're going to take our barrel bushing. Again, we're going to put it in from this side right here, kind of at a, about a four o'clock position. And then we can turn our barrel bushing around. Next, we're going to take our plug and we're going to push it in. And holding tension, we're going to bring that barrel bushing back until it snaps into place. So a little different than your standard, but very doable. And again, these have been around for a long time. Man, the USGIs could do that in their sleep. The price on the Charles Daly Field Grade 1911 is $499 on the Charles Daly website. Uh, but of course, market price, you can typically get it for less. This is an upgraded version to me from the original Charles Daly's and I really think that Brixia has done a great job. Fit and finish on here is impeccable. As far as pros and cons go, um, there's not really a lot of cons if you're looking for a basic entry-level 1911. 
Uh, it does have only one magazine. I'd probably like to see a couple of magazines. I like the grips, and of course, you can change those out if you want. Sights are those GI sights, and while that's a con for some, it just sticks with the basic feel of the handgun. Putting on a high-ride beaver tail, higher sights, you know, ambidextrous <laughs> safeties, competition, triggers, but uh, as far as a basic 1911 that's reminiscent of your GI surplus, uh, this is definitely one that I think that you should take a look at. Again, we had no reliability issues. The accuracy was good. It just shot like a 1911. And if you really have been wanting a 1911 and, and you don't want to spend double that for a lot of the guns that are out on the market, this is a great one to get started with. So guys, if you're a fan of the 1911, but you don't want to pay those high prices, I think that the Charles Daly Field Grade 1911 is a great choice. And more than ever, being made there in Italy, I mean, the quality and the finish is just exceptional. Uh, the tolerances are put together well. It comes in way above its pay grade. At $4.99 retail, you can definitely get this on online sources or the market price for a lot less. And again, we want to thank GetZone.com for putting this together. Also, Charles Daly for sending the Field Grade 1911. Rubber Dummies is one of the best training tools on the market. And you get a 10% discount using Suit00 when you click the link down in the description. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. This handgun is. Why is that hammer in the rear? <laughs> Why is it half cocked? It has a manganize. A manganize. Has a manganize finish on it. The hammer, unless the hammer's in. Okay. <laughs> the hammer. The hammer's in the rear position. It's nice to have those. It's nice to have those. I'm all confused. I'm making this like all screwed up, screwed up. Imported by Chiapa are made. Okay. <clears throat> The 1911 is, 